you're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. Welcome back to The Andrew Lawton Show. Well, obviously, the 2021 election is done, but for most parties and political movers, the fight for the next election, whether that comes in 2023 or 2025, whenever it is, is still underway. And we always try to do things a little bit differently at True North and spotlight some of the parties and leaders who don't necessarily get attention from the mainstream media, but whose perspectives are nonetheless very significant and certainly part of the Canadian political fabric. And I wanted to do exactly that this segment. Talk to the leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada, Jacques Boudreau. Now, Jacques is a relatively new leader to the party, as we'll talk about in just a moment. Tim Moe and I had on the show previously was the, the former leader. But I, I should say right out of the gate, Jacques and I have a bit of a history, not a bad history, but when I ran as a candidate in London West for the Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario in 2018, he was the Libertarian candidate in uh, that riding. And we both lost... Uh, he's now moved on to leading a party, and I've just run as far from politics as I can. Uh, but it's great to talk to you again. Uh, Jacques Boudreau, thanks very much for coming on today. Thank you, Andrew. It's great to see you again. So how did you end up the leader? Let's start there. Why did you want that job, and, and how did you get there? So we had a convention in Edmonton uh, the weekend of August 14th and 15th. In leading up to that, the position of deputy leader was vacant, and I had made up my mind that um, I would be a good candidate for it, um, if only because I'm bilingual. Uh, I thought Tim did a great job, but uh, in order to get traction in French-speaking Canada, I thought, well, that would be uh, pretty good. But then a few weeks before, Tim announced that he had done his bit and uh, needed to move on. And I thought, well, deputy leader, leader, um, why not go for it? I mean, I... And of course, jumping right into the, uh, the, the busy season, heading into an election, of course, too. Well, it, I don't know if it's a bad or good omen, but I was elected on the 15th, which is when the election was called, so... There we go. Let, let me go back to the basics here in a lot of ways, because I, I know for people that are involved in, in, you know, politics and have had even some background in political theory, perhaps the word libertarian takes on a meaning that it might not have for the average Canadian. How do you define what a libertarian is, either in, in general or, or just in a Canadian political context, such as the Libertarian Party of Canada? Well, as you know, there are different... Um hues or colors of libertarianism, but uh, to my mind, a libertarian is anybody who abides on a consistent basis to the non-aggression principle. And for those who don't know it, it's very, very simple. It's that the initiation or the threat of initiation of force against the innocent is wrong. And by innocent here, again, because you need to define these things, is anyone who does not engage in the, what I like to refer to as the shall nots. Right. So if you don't engage in murder, beating up, uh, raping, uh, stealing, uh, then you are you are innocent. And it's I would say from that perspective, we are very at odds with most of the parties who will regularly. Vote, for example, for laws that would outlaw things that uh, they don't like, but not liking something is very, very different from Outlawing, outlawing something that is uh, that is wrong in the sense that, you know, if there's aggression, of course, you want to outlaw law it, but you, you, you shouldn't outlaw things that you simply disagree with. And, you know, I, I can think of two very good examples of this in Quebec right now, where people have learned nothing from history. Um, you know, the, the well, the very, very recent one is all the, the heat that... Um, the president of Air Canada is taking because he doesn't speak French. Now, maybe you're offended by this. Maybe you think it's poor uh, marketing, uh, and we could argue that maybe those are. But he's certainly not aggressing anybody by not speaking French. So people who are calling for draconian measures to compel him to do so, from a libertarian point of view, are completely wrong. Um, more egregious is Bill 21 in Quebec, mm -hmm. where, again, if you wear a religious symbol on the job, you are not aggressing anybody. Now, if you don't like it, from a libertarian point of view, it would be, well, that's tough. 
but you, you can't start at gunpoint telling people what they, can, what they can or cannot do simply because you don't like what they do. So it, I would say it's a, it's a very marked difference between us and the other parties who, again, will engage in this type of behavior on a regular basis. Because another thing that is um, confused greatly is, uh, and Francois Legault actually made that point. He said, well, Bill 21 is okay because the majority of Quebecers approve of it, and moreover, it was passed democratically. To which I say, well, you are confusing what is legal with what is moral, right? You've made it legal, but it's still immoral. And, you know, there's all kinds of examples of this throughout the, the history of mankind. I mean, apartheid was legal, uh, segregation in the southern U.S. was legal, um, you know, Hitler came into power through democratic means. So there's all kinds of examples where you can't confuse morality with legality. I, I think you touch on something very important, though, Jacques, and, and this is, I'd, I'd say, one of my biggest frustrations in Canadian politics right now, and it, it's probably not a, a distinctly Canadian phenomenon, it, is that so many people are unwilling to make that distinction. You see this uh, especially in the context of, of so-called hate speech laws, where, where people say, you know, because I, I dislike that speech, I deplore that speech, it should therefore be illegal. How do you break through that? Because I, I think that what everyone should do is, is just do exactly what you said, just live their lives as long as they're not aggressing on others, as long as they're not infringing on others' liberties. But so many people want to uh, equate those two and, and link those two, the legal and the moral. Well, so first of all, just to be crystal clear, um, the Libertarian Party of Canada is certainly not opposed to the criminal aspect of what, you know, the criminal laws are, that, that we have with regard to hate speech. I mean, you, in terms of aggressing people, we, we, don't, we don't condone or favor anybody who would... Um, you know, sort of bring up hate against other people or encourage violence against certain groups. So we're fine with it. Well, if I may, though, Jacques, those are very different things. Encouraging violence, you can argue that's a, a threat, that infringes on other liberties. Where do you draw that line, though? Because bringing up hate, that's an emotion. And, and we have in Canada a, a very significant debate about where that line is drawn. So where would you draw it? Yeah, sorry, I, I misspoke. I mean, I would say anybody who incite violence against a group okay. out of hate. Yeah. Good, good. No, um, I mean, part of the battle, to answer your question, is, of course, is that we've had legal judgments where stating facts that are verifiable could constitute hate speech. I mean, that, that was a terrible, terrible judgment. I mean, I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how one could come to that. Um, I mean, to address your point, I would say that I would point to people that at some point, they will be on the receiving end of these types of laws. Like one day they will express an opinion, and we see this on the left all the time. I mean, I, I think it was on your show last week, uh, possibly where, um, or, or maybe it was Candace, but uh, talking about how um, Margaret Atwood, no, oh, yeah, you know, was suddenly, you know, people turned on her because she expressed an opinion that uh, people didn't like. So. One way that I would try to get through to people is, you know, you just wait. At some point, you will express an opinion that people will not like. And again, it's not because they don't like it that they constitute hate speech. And, you know, could try to point to past examples, you know, like Margaret Atwood or other people. We often hear from conservative politicians in, in particular the importance of small government, limited government. And now, obviously, the Libertarian Party is, is going a, a lot farther in, in, in terms of how much to shrink government. But, but I will ask you, do you feel that the conservatives are better than the liberals, even in a small way, on the idea of liberty? Or is your view that they're, they're entirely just two sides of the same coin? I find that conservatism in Canada is very much like um, the Republican Party in the U.S., in that when they are not in power, they speak a fairly good game. I mean, it's certainly not as good as I would like it to be, but then you get into power, and there's a very serious disconnect between what they argued while in the opposition and what they, they do when, once they're in power. So my answer is the rhetoric, yeah, is certainly better than the liberals, once they get into power, I'm not sure. 
how do you rank the People's Party of Canada? Because this is a party that, in the last election in particular, was, I, I think, taking what I would argue are fairly libertarian positions on vaccine mandates, vaccine passports. I know Maxime Bernier has in the past been called, I don't know if he's called himself it, but he's been called by other people more of a libertarian. Has this party done a lot of the work that you would like to see done in Canadian politics on, on these issues? Yes. I mean, they... Well, Maxime does not want to be referred to as a libertarian. I think he's made that clear. Um, I mean, when he quit the Conservatives, I mean, quite frankly, we had some talks with him and I mean, it, it didn't go anywhere in part because I think he, again, he does not want to be a libertarian, but they certainly have many um, elements of their platform are identical to ours. In fact, we think sometimes he's... Um, He's taken them, which is fine. I mean, it, we're about ideas, not necessarily being in power. But um, I would simply say I don't think they go far enough. But I certainly like when they talk about doing away with supply management, you know, we would certainly be in uh, in favor of that, you know, smaller government. But, you know, I, I think we'd still have a very large federal government under a PPC um, government. What is it that you would like to see if you, if you were the prime minister? And I, I know, obviously, you're, you're not talking about uh, expecting that. You, you have very realistic expectations about being a party of ideas. But, but what would be the top three things that you think would be feasible within the Canadian political climate that would move things to where you want them to be? Well, I'm, a, I'm an actuary uh, by background. So, um, you know, the fiscal side of things, particularly... Uh, what we refer to as unfunded liabilities is a is a massive massive problem which and I find this bewildering but nobody talks about this I have brought it up on the campaign trail and all I get is people's eyes glazing over but you know it amounts to 2.7 trillion dollars in this country and there are promises made to people that will be very very difficult to to keep so I certainly and this is not even strictly speaking, libertarian, but um, it needs to be addressed. I mean, from a libertarian point of view, one of the things that absolutely needs to be done is to allow young people to opt out of things like the CPP, because the, the rate of return, the implied rate of return on their contributions is abysmal. And I, you know, I, I can show you the numbers at some point, um, but that, that needs to be addressed. I mean, we cannot continue to kick the can down the road, which is what we do. Uh, and at some point, um, like Medicare is, um, it, it's included in that. You know, one of my colleagues at the Canadian Institute of Actuaries in 2013 projected that 25 years from that date, close to 100% of provincial uh, taxes would need to go to pay for health care. So if you're a big government person, that means leaves no money to pay for education, leaves no money to pay for roads and, and all the, the things that people want. That needs to be addressed, and I, I see no plan whatsoever on the part of government to uh, to address that. Yeah, very, very well said, Jacques Boudreau, leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada. We'll have to have you back on the show and, and perhaps do a deeper dive into the pension question because I, I think it's a very important one. Thanks very much for coming on, Jacques. All right, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Andrew Lawton Show. Support the program by donating to True North at www.tnc.news.